Uh, this gospel reading comes from a long section in the Gospel of John, the Last Supper Discourse. And this chapter 15, the reference in today's text, has a very personal, sentimental attachment for me over Cardinal Manning's grave at Calvary Cemetery, there is a Latin inscription which reads, Yam non dicam vos servus sed amicos meus, taken from today's gospel. I no longer call you slaves, but my friends. And that has meant something very special to Cardinal Manning before he died, since he chose to have that reference as a remembrance of his faith and his ministry. But let me tell you what it means to me in my own journey of life. The uh, exegesis on it is important. Slaves are douloi. Doulos is a slave in the gospel text. A slave is, a slave of God is an exalted person. But the friends, that's an intimacy. The filios or filioi. And the tension here is to reassure you that as a slave, you will keep the commandments out of servile obedience. But as a friend, you will keep the commandments out of bonded relationship, not fear. You will live the lifestyle out of love, not out of fear or servile obedience. And therefore, the tension is to shift the understanding of Jesus' followers here sinners and imperfect that they were from the servile douloi to the cherished, intimate filioi, the friends of Jesus. There's a closeness, there's a, a kindness, an attachment, a reassurance it's a safe place in the presence of Jesus who calls you a beloved friend. Let me tell you what that means to me in my own spiritual journey. A few weeks ago, I left on this pilgrim journey for the Camino Santiago de Compostela. It was about a three-week absence from the parish. And the pilgrim is reminded that the Camino begins when you leave home. I was very conscious of that. So I went to London. I stayed overnight, visited my sister, who is very advanced in her Alzheimer's and doesn't know anybody. She's very sick. And all the time, I knew I was on the Camino. I knew that God was present. And even visiting her and her community of persons who are very frequently forgotten and seeing those who care for this special community, I knew that this was part of a pilgrimage. I knew that God was present to me. And I wrote journals, and I prayed, and I had this sense that the journey was in the presence of God. And eventually we got to walk the Camino and drive part of it from France through Spain over to Compostela. And we talked and we walked and we prayed, and we sang, and we told stories. And all the time, 
God was present. And after about three weeks, we got to Compostela. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a Mass there. First of all, on Saturday, we had our first Mass at Compostela. Glorious cathedral, and we, eight pilgrims together, went to Mass. And they put the incense up for us. You've seen that in the movie. Then on Sunday, I thought to myself, in order to complete this pilgrimage, I need to go to confession. There's something missing from my life. I need to somehow be reconciled in my humanity. So on Saturday, I saw a number of priests hearing confessions, and I went around and said, do you speak English? No. I thought maybe I would go in Latin. Ego sum sacerdos, sacerdos confidior deo. But this encounter is meant to, it's meant to have body in it. It must be in flesh. It must be transparent, to be real. But on Sunday, I was wandering around in the cathedral, and I met this priest, and I asked him if he spoke English, and he said, yes. He was from Germany. He said, you'll do fine. <laughs> I said, I, I need to make my confession, and he said, wonderful. He sat down and I knelt down before him, and I made a general confession of my life. There's something marvelous about that, where you take every piece of your life, your humanity, the best, the worst of your life, the sins, the failings, the weakness, hand it over in the presence of another person. There's a humility about that, but there is an extraordinary grace to it. Now, I should say that when I did the penance tract 50 years ago in Latin, the penitent had to confess, we said, secundum specium et numerum, according to species and number. You'll remember that. So, how many times, details, sometimes I think even prurient, but nonetheless, you had to confess all these details. This is no longer true. Now we call it the sacrament of reconciliation. So instead of emphasizing detail of confessing, the experience is the reconciling love of God. It's a shift away from the detail of confessing to experience the wonder of God reconciling. And so that priest blessed me. I did go through secundum specium et numerum. I mean, I hemorrhaged. I, I, I'm sure he went away shaking. I mean, he had to go to recover. So I blessed him with all my weakness, the struggles of my life, and he blessed me. And then I heard the gospel. Then I heard the gospel. I heard the voice of Jesus saying, you are my friend. You are my beloved friend. And the gospel came to life for me. And the pilgrimage was complete. There was a spiritual renewal a new awareness of God, a new sense of God's blessing, a freedom to be human in the presence of this wonder God who says to you in your weakness, in your struggle, in your impediments in life, in the contradictions of your life, listen to the voice of God saying, you are my friend. You know, when I went to confession to this priest, 
I almost said to him, put me down for everything. <laughs> Just everything. <laughs> but actually, he couldn't put me down for everything because I haven't broken all Ten Commandments. But see how the gospel comes to life. Bring the gospel to life. Hear the voice of Jesus saying to you, as I hear the voice of Jesus saying to me, I no longer call you a slave. Do not follow me because of fear. Do not obey the commandments because you are servile. Do not follow me because you expect some reward. You're my friend. And here's the final thought. Remember the crisis you had in your life? Some moment of great fear or some time of great discouragement in your life? Who did you go to? To whom did you talk? Perhaps you went to your wife. Maybe you went to your husband. Perhaps to a parent, a close friend, a priest. In your time of crisis, this is the time when you need to hear the gospel, the voice of Jesus that said to Judas, to Peter, to everybody who is imperfect, to you, to me. You are my beloved friend.